Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV and its PDAC 2022. And Commodity TV is a proud TV partner, of course, of this fair. Unfortunately, we cannot be personally there, but we use, of course, all opportunities to bring great companies in front of you, like today, Ion Energy. And Ali Hachi, the CEO, is here with us. Good morning to you. Actually, you are in New York today. Fantastic. How are you? I'm doing very well, Joachim. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. Yeah, pleasure to see you and uh, great to see you in good shape. Uh, that's uh, fantastic these days. Uh, I'm pretty sure you fly back quite soon to Toronto and then do the PDAC. Um, yeah, honestly, uh, I'm a shareholder of your company. I have to disclose that upfront, of course. And I was very, very happy when I saw your news. Actually, that was my birthday when you brought the news out, funny <laughs> enough. <laughs> You reported 918 milligrams lithium per liter uh, in an essay. I mean, that is a great discovery thing, right? Absolutely. I think, you know, uh, we've had uh, a long hiatus as far as getting out to country in Mongolia and getting some exploration work underway. Uh, mm -hmm. The team and I, including uh, Don Haynes and Dr. Mark King. Uh, Dr. Mark King was the qualified person at Neolithium uh, when it sold to Zijin. So a very mm -hmm. seasoned PhD hydrogeologist. Uh, Don Haynes, of course, uh, an industry renowned expert in both the brine and hard rock space. Uh, we were able to design an exploration program before going out to Mongolia. We were there about a month ago. Uh, it included uh, a number of TEM geophysics lines along with some drill holes. So we drilled about 72 holes in total. Uh, but importantly, as you've mentioned, Jochen, we uh, we did the old uh, Coke bottle, uh, yeah. acid, which is, you know, you collect the brine sample on surface yes. and we received results of up to 918 milligrams per liter. So extremely exciting uh, as a company, as a board, as as uh, as far as my technical team is concerned, we're extremely encouraged with what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. Uh, the rest of uh, the work that will be done on Baba or Urgaknar, and I beg your pardon, uh, will include uh, some monitoring wells. So we'll start to, to plan those now that we have the geophysics results in. Uh, but 918 milligrams per liter on surface, you know, that that's on par with anybody that you might expect to see in LATAM. So one of the majors that have had uh, significant successes or exits. Uh, if you're above the 900 milligram per liter uh, range on surface, yes, there is some concentration as a result of evaporation on surface, uh, but we couldn't be more pleased. We're very excited with what we're seeing at Rogaknarn. Yeah, I really can imagine because I have the photo with the bottle here in front of me. Probably you is you are holding that, and yes. that looks really great because it's like a like that brown uh, liquid stuff, and this is the lithium inside, right? So that that looks really fantastic. But there's also a beautiful photo, um, or let's say a map uh, below that in your press release. The exploration mm -hmm. statues at Urgak Naran as of 9th May. So now we are already four weeks later. So what's going on there with the lines? Uh, what have you done the last four weeks here? The lines have now been completed. Uh, we have Zonj in the US uh, currently reviewing the data. So we'll have that put out to market uh, hopefully next week during PDAC. We intend to, to release the results of that uh, geophysics program. And that, of course, will dictate where the monitoring wells go down into the ground. Um, so that's currently being uh, designed by by both Don and Mark. Uh, they're working with Tushin uh, Kishiksurin, who is my, uh, my director in Mongolia that runs our exploration, uh, who will be at PDAC. So if anybody's around and they'd like to discuss uh, anything with him, he will be around. Uh, but uh, yeah, so they're planning those holes. Uh, we intend to, to get started during the course of PDAC. So hopefully we have an announcement next week where we, we highlight uh, the, the, the uh, stratigraphy as well as the, the geophysics of the basin, uh, and then ultimately put those drill holes down to, to put those monitoring wells in place. So uh, lots, lots of uh, work to come, um, as well as uh, the assay results of the holes that were drilled. So we're, we're, we're really keen uh, with respect to what we're seeing so far. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. So you now said those 918 milligrams were from surface. How deep does that brine go down, for example? Because we have sometimes often viewers that say, hey, what is the difference here? How deep are those lakes? How does that work? Because those those drill programs are like 800 meters, 1,000 meters only. And if you compare it to gold mining, sometimes one hole is 1,000 meters. So what is that difference here? Maybe you can give us a little bit of ex, uh, explanation. Of course. So with Urgak Narn, for instance, uh, it resides in uh, an endoheric basin, much like you would expect to see in uh, the Atacama or any other mm -hmm. such uh, lithium brine asset. Uh, it's actually uh, flanked by two uh, fault lines, which is indicative mm -hmm. of uh, volcanic rocks. Obviously, the lithium is leached out of that. Uh, given the fact that the actual license is 29,000 hectares, mm -hmm. uh, when we were on site, we were able to see a basin 
or a bottom of about 17,000 hectares, so quite a significant basin. Uh, we were also able to see some salt flats on surface that would mirror what you would find in Argentina or Chile, for instance. And that was encouraging enough for us to say that there is, in fact, uh, brine here. So, yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, we collected the surface samples and we were able to, to assay that to 918 milligrams per liter. Uh, the geophysics program is where we will dictate exactly how deep uh, mm -hmm. those brines are. So that, that result will come out next week. And obviously the monitoring wells uh, will be uh, as deep as they have to be, um, ultimately mm -hmm. to get to that aquifer body and then ultimately manage or measure uh, the flow rates as mm -hmm. well to get a, a sense of the grade. So uh, too early to tell, uh, Jochen, but uh, the expectation is that, uh, that they're not uh, as deep as you would find at, at uh, you know, they're not at the, the tail end or, or the far end of depth uh, as far as uh, comparisons are concerned. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. So let's let's assume um, all your um, surveys and uh, the uh, TEM and whatever you have done, geophysical lines, that all comes uh, well out. So what would be the next steps? You said monitor wells. Um, what else do you have to do? So we'd have to do the monitoring wells, and that would allow us to understand the flow rates, the average grade, and ultimately mm -hmm. the depth of those aquifers, how quickly they're replenished, uh, which is ex extremely important, um, as well as uh, some of the climate-related uh, work. So we will have weather data from Delgare, which is a town about five kilometers from our exploration camp. So the weather very much mirrors what you would expect to see on site. Um, and then at that point, when you have an average grade across that aquifer, uh, alongside the geophysics, which gives you a volume, uh, you're at an early resource indication stage. So it's not a PEA, you know, you're not looking at, uh, at, at potentially um, uh, a resource that is 43101 compliant, uh, but you have a good, good sense of how much lithium is in the ground, and you can put out a resource estimate uh, on the back of that. Uh, with that, of course, we expect to see some uh, interest from strategics. We're currently speaking with a number of them, uh, Asian, European, and one uh, in, out of LATAM as well. So, uh, you know, they're keen to get their hands dirty and roll up their sleeves and get into the data room. Uh, we're going to wait until after PDAC when we uh, yeah. compile all the data based on the release that we're, we're expecting to put out next week. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll provide access to these strategics. And the goal, of course, is, you know, um, we, we've always been very clear with Ion Energy. It, it's not a production story. Our goal is to come to an early resource indication and then partner uh, with a strategic that would ultimately bring this to production. Mm -hmm. And so having the NDAs in place currently with, with uh, you know, 11 companies in total now, wow. um, the expectation is that uh, come September, uh, we'll be in a position to announce a strategic investment from one of these uh, said strategics. Oh, wow. That, that sounds great. Hopefully at much higher share prices. Indeed. I mean, why would I <laughs> anything less than what the previous <laughs> raised? That's not, uh, not, not fair to myself or my shareholders. So absolutely yeah. would be at a premium. Exactly. Absolutely. No, that's great. And I think you are only like, what, 10, 14 kilometers from the Chinese border. So I could imagine the Chinese are uh, watching you also very carefully, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Baba Yol is about 23 kilometers from the Chinese border. Urga Kanaran is, is in and around the 150 to 200 uh, uh, kilometer range, but it's obviously obviously in Dorn Govi. Uh, Dorn Govi is uh, a very infrastructure rich province. Erlian, which is the primary border crossing into China, is in that province. You have a uh, railway, you have uh, highways, uh, you have um, you know an oil refinery that's being built by the Indians, a power plant that's being built uh, with Rio Tinto and the government of Mongolia as well. So a very strong province in terms of infrastructure. And you're absolutely right. Uh, our proximity to the largest consumer on the planet uh, you know, makes ION quite compelling relative to somebody that has to ship their lithium 15,000 nautical miles uh, to China that consumes 53% of the world's lithium today. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you must, or you can track it even in the mm -hmm. future. Exactly. exactly. I think that's a big advantage. Absolutely. Um, how mining friendly is the province you are in? I mean, you just listed all those advantages, but also with the people around you, surrounding you, the town, is that all in good standing? Yes, absolutely. You know, Mongolia is a, is a very uh, patriotic uh, nation, a nation that you have to get uh, approval and sign off from, from just about everybody before you get work done. Um, and for us at Ion Energy, you know, social license is a big part of the way that we operate. And so well before we planned any exploration, we spent enough time speaking with the locals, building um, a relationship with the community. Mm -hmm so that they understand what we're up to and, and the work that we will be doing. Uh, and yes, we have received sign off from everybody, sign off from everybody in that community, in that mm -hmm. province. Uh, we've had uh, meetings with the elders to explain, uh, you know, mining is something that, that might be a, a, tad, a tad new uh, to, to, to some folks. Uh, but obviously, you know, with lithium, um, it, it is a bit different. Uh, specifically when you're doing brine and you're doing direct lithium extraction, uh, you know, you're, you're not going to scar the land in a way that you might uh, have if you have an open pit uh, coal mine, for instance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, this is a, an operation that will have a plant on site, a DLE plant, uh, that will ultimately pump up the brine 
extract the lithium concentrate uh, a brine solution uh, and then that would be shipped over to to, to refiners uh, to start anyway mm -hmm. and uh, that that doesn't impact the ground so much you're also pumping back the vast majority of the water back into the the water tables so you're not mm -hmm. impacting uh, the water table in that region and that's that's sort of the education piece that we had to bring forward uh, to the elders mm -hmm. and to the community to help them understand what we would be doing uh, in, in country and in province. So uh, long story short, uh, we've had nothing but unequivocal support. Fantastic, super. Last question, because it's for me also of private interest. We saw last week that Goldman Sachs said lithium, cobalt, nickel. Oh, you know, guys, that's done. There are way too high prices. It has moved way too far ahead of the markets. And we think it's going to fall, uh, not sharply, but it will definitely fall. What's your view on that? That's, you know, it's, it's a great question. And I think uh, for quite some time now, uh, myself and my advisors, including Paul Fornazari, uh, who is a partner at Fascan, but also the founding chairman of Lithium Americas, uh, founding director of Neo Lithium, uh, he's uh, a key advisor of mine. And him and I have had a, a number of conversations uh, to date and, and over the last year or so. I mean, we look at uh, pre-pandemic, lithium was about six to $8,000 per ton. Uh, as of last week, you're looking at seventy-seven to to eighty thousand dollars per ton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, these are obviously spot contracts. There is definitely a, a, a glut in in supply, so you're not you're unable to get uh, the necessary lithium for this clean green energy revolution, and that's why these prices have skyrocketed. Uh, it's in our view, uh, more specifically my view, um, that lithium will start to teeter off here, and uh, that will be required in order for this clean green energy revolution to continue. Um, at today's prices, you know, the equivalent of a, a Mini Cooper, a two-door Mini Cooper, if that were to be fully electric, mm -hmm. um, at today's lithium prices, despite lithium only being 4% of the battery, um, you're looking at costs upwards of 100,000 US per vehicle. Now, governments can print as much money as they want to subsidize the 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 uh, the uptake of uh, electric vehicles, uh, but they're not going to print that much money. And let's no. not kid ourselves. Inflation and everything else is taking root uh, in, in the global economy today. So it's in our view that that price will come down. Um, it'll be around uh, you know sub twenty two thousand dollars. That's where we saw sort of see the, the, the sweet spot between sixteen and $22,000. And that will start to happen as you have more and more unconventional resources come online. Uh, some of the supply contracts perhaps will um, uh, you know, either lapse or, or, or will require some renewal. Uh, but importantly, I think until you can bring lithium on a, on a global metal exchange, much like the LME, uh, it's going to be very tough to, 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 to track those prices or even uh, try, try to reduce those prices at this time. So mm -hmm. it's in our view that that price will come down, uh, but that does not mean that there is uh, you know, enough lithium there today uh, to help fuel um, at least the next 15 or 20 years uh, worth of electrification. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, I saw also some graphs for, I think for uh, next year, they expect already 350,000 tons LCE demand. But do yeah. we have the supply for that? Uh, well, it's too, too early to tell, but I think you start to see more and more come online. You know, uh -huh. there's assets in, in regions that you would have never thought would have had lithium, such as the Congo. Uh, that's getting a lot of interest now uh, for some of their hard rock assets. Um, mm -hmm. And we're seeing more and more unconventional resources. I mean, Mali has had investment from Zijin. Uh, mm -hmm. Zijin just put in um, a fair bit of money in Tibet. Uh, for much the same remit uh, you have companies that uh, most in the western hemisphere have never heard of but uh, you know have three to seven billion dollar market caps that are currently aligning themselves with uh, various lithium uh, producers or, or miners around the world so yes i think um, we'll start to see a, a number of new assets come online uh, will it happen by next year <laughs> you know that's a bit quick uh, but uh, there are things that are moving quite uh, in the right direction i would say yeah, and demand is also growing. So I think also there's a there's a nice market still, and uh, I think lithium prices with uh, whatever twenty four, twenty five thousand, thirty thousand, I mean that is still really enough uh, to do a production, especially with brines, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, you know, the, the cost of DLE specifically um, yeah. when you're, you're partnering with uh, those that have really mastered the skill uh, or, or have had a number of different uh, successes, which is the the Chinese, especially northern mm -hmm. China. Um, the cost of operations there can be quite minimal. Uh, obviously, we are a Mongolian company. 100% of our staff in country are Mongolian. There's enough skilled labor in country uh, to, to run an operation of this magnitude uh, should it come to production. Um, and that allows you to keep your costs quite low. And let's let again, you know, let's not forget uh, the carbon footprint. You know, we talk about electrification and we talk about 
uh, getting lithium from from LATAM that ultimately ends up in China uh, for this clean green energy revolution. Uh, but uh, think about the shipping carbon footprint uh, that is involved as opposed to perhaps ship, putting it on the back of a truck or a railroad that goes about 150 to 200 kilometers into China from mm. Mongolia. Yeah, much easier. Super. Thank you very much, Ali. That looks great. And uh, yeah, we look forward, hopefully, to some good news then next week. And uh, wish you a great PDAC. And I have a good feeling that we talk quite soon. Of course. Thank you. Uh, Joachim, Thank always you. a pleasure. Always a pleasure for me. Thank you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Ali Hachi, the CEO of Ion Energy. And you heard it. Things are really going well. They had this great discovery, actually, also on my birthday, which I really liked, of course. There was a nice present. But the stock has not done really a lot so far, which is really strange. And that strong leads your markets. And one thing is for sure, electri the electrification of the, of the mobility is definitely not going away. It is growing. We need more leads for the future. The demand for of until 2030 already at 1 million tons LCE and uh, there is the demand the supply is also growing of course but we will see if the supply can go uh, hand in hand with the demand I'm not really sure because it takes time to bring up new mines and it takes time to get them all permitted but uh, we are very positive on lithium very positive on ion energy you should check out this fantastic company and uh, as Ali said they are only some kilometers away from the Chinese border and this is where 53 percent of the lithium in this world is is really used. So thanks for watching us. It was for PDAC 2022. Bye-bye from Switzerland.